9.33 this morning, we're bringing you massive breaking news from the world of football. Roman Abramovich has been sanctioned officially by the UK government. All his UK assets have been frozen. Chelsea can still operate under a special licence, but the sale of the club is now on hold. The sanctions are wide-ranging and they relate to all commercial activity around the club. So Martin Ziegler is reporting this morning and others that the club will not be allowed to sell any more tickets. Only season ticket holders will be able to go to games for the foreseeable future. No merchandise will be available to be sold. Catering will be allowed at the matches, but this is an absolutely massive blow to Roman Abramovich and to Chelsea. And it's kind of about time. We've been talking about why the UK government hadn't done anything to sanction the oligarchs, but uh, Abramovich is one amongst several that have been hit. Uh, Boris Johnson has this morning said there can be no safe havens for those who have supported the invasion of uh, Ukraine by Russia and uh, the details of or the, certainly what the UK government understands to be the relationship between Abramovich and Putin is now being spoken about openly by the UK government for the first time and this news is just breaking in the last 10 minutes but it's very interesting because they have essentially frozen the assets no details yet on whether or not they might give those assets back or if those assets are being seized in the same way that um, we saw the uh, German authorities uh, seizing the super yacht last week. Uh, it will be very interesting to see exactly what happens next. Absolutely. And as you say there, what's really interesting is that you've got wording from the UK government on Putin's involvement in what's going on at the moment. So uh, just a direct quote from what's been published this morning, Abramovich is associated with a person who is slash has been involved in destabilising Ukraine and undermining slash threatening territorial integrity, sovereignty and independence of Ukraine, namely Vladimir Putin, with whom he has had close relationships with for decades. It was interesting, Jonathan Wilson was on the show last week of The Guardian saying that everything that The Guardian do can't really mention Putin and Abramovich's relationship. It is just a no-go area in terms of legality. I wonder, will this free up the press in the UK to, I guess, reveal more information about the exact sort of relationship that has existed between Abramovich and Putin and Russia? We still don't know as much as we might think about this guy, and I wonder, will more information come to light as a result of this? Obviously, that's the B side to the story. The A side is I think, Chelsea Football Club. Well, I, I think actually, in in a way, Chelsea is the B side. That relationship mm. is absolutely going to be front and center now of all the conversations that we have, and more details on on uh, what we know about Abramovich and uh, the source of his money and his relationship with Putin and the influence that that may or may not have have bought him in the past. Just again, um, uh, under the license that Chelsea have been. Um, given subject to the conditions below. The club may pay remuneration, that's wages, allowances and pensions of all employees of the club, including the wages of players and coaching staff, fees, dividends and other allowances to directors of the club, payable under obligations which predate the date of the licence and are due in the period of this licence, but not any fees, dividends or other allowances to the DP. Uh, reasonable fees or costs related to the ongoing maintenance, council tax, insurance. So the club will be allowed to function it's just not going to be allowed to function at full capacity. We're rejoined by Martin Lipton to reflect on this breaking news this morning. Um, what, what's your instinct here, Martin? What, what, what has happened in the last 24 hours that the uh, government have decided to take this stance now against Abramovich? I think things have just continued, haven't they? Uh, there was a hope that... Um, I thought he'd be given a degree of leeway to you know, basically get out of Dodge was the injunction. that it, This is coming. He knew it was coming. That's why he moved last week to put the club up for sale. Uh, the Premier League have been in, uh, determined and insistent that whatever happened, there will be a carve-out, that that would allow the club to function. Otherwise, uh, any fan putting a penny through the gate would be breaking the law. So there had to be that for obvious obvious reasons. But it means that there's obviously no chance of any further funding from Abramovich. And the question is whether he'll be allowed to sell. I suspect not. It's not entirely clear. And Chelsea appear to be very much in limbo as a club at the moment. That That is interesting, that the fact that they needed the carve out. I guess, you know, when you think about these things, uh, swift action would maybe have resulted in a scenario where Chelsea were no longer allowed to function, which would have had knock on impacts for the integrity of the league. And that could have ended up blown up in, in, the, um, in the government's face. So once that has happened, I mean, it seems as if Chelsea have been and are being given a license to continue with the rest of the season. Uh, they'll be able to make match day. Um, match day happen they won't be allowed to sell any more tickets I don't know if Chelsea sell out as season tickets I presume they don't 
Um, they get a reasonable... T- I mean, they average about 42, don't they? There's a 44,000 capacity. The issue, I guess, is for away fans who haven't yet bought their tickets for those matches that aren't for sale yet. Will they be? They won't be allowed to buy them on that basis. It's, it is really unclear. The Premier League needs to find out and to explain. They've got, I think, what, five, five or six home matches left, um, including Newcastle on Sunday, which is the, the battle of the two detested regimes, it, it would appear. Um, and... Uh, it's a really interesting scenario. How does it play out? It would be unfair, for example, if other clubs couldn't send Arsenal for their big derby match, which is yet to be rearranged, couldn't have any fans at Stamford Bridge. That would be unfair. But if Chelsea can't sell tickets, then Arsenal couldn't have fans at the game. I wonder, could they give tickets away for free? To uh, I mean, maybe maybe they can't take any revenue, but maybe they can still issue tickets. Um... I suppose they could issue them to the Premier League, who could then dispose of them that will be or give them straight to Arsenal even and then Arsenal can make a decision about where the money goes but if that 20 20 pound or 30 pound cap was in place then you can it would be a re- relatively m- minimal sum that was being raised but there'd have to there has to be some sort of way around it definitely this is a a huge issue which uh, is in the greater scheme of things minimal but in football terms it's quite important what is clear is that a decision has been made by the highest level of the UK government, uh, prompted, I suspect, by actions going to be taken by the EU and um, and the US. But there you go, because I saw um, Abramovich list, uh, listed on a potential list of US sanctions in the, uh, just a couple of days ago. Um, but it's got extremely serious now. And if, if anyone tells you they know how it's going to play out, they're lying, I suspect, because I'm not sure anyone knows. What's going to be interesting as well is um, how quickly the Chelsea fans now rush to the defence of Roman Abramovich when Martin more information will be allowed to be reported in, in your own media first off I mean just kind of again going going through what's been published this morning from the UK government one of the things that has been mentioned is that Abramovich uh, is a, a shareholder of Everaz PLC which is a steel manufacturing and mining company which has uh, supposedly been involved in supplying tanks uh, at the production of tanks uh, and other steel to the Russian military over the last little while so he is a shareholder in a company that is actually helping the the, the war the invasion of it's Ukraine directly linked directly to linked the, to funding of of for po- propelling the invasion of Ukraine correct so I mean that's as serious an allegation as you can get I would I would argue absolutely the fact that there's an ongoing relationship with Putin which he's always denied uh, as we know from the legal issues um, uh, in the the Catherine Belton book last year this whether proven or not, has now been alleged and stated as fact by the UK government. That's a significant up, uh, upscaling of position, isn't it, without any question. The tribality of football means that there will be some who uh, will rush to his defence come what may. I think the majority of Chelsea supporters, I hope, will not take that stance. They can be proud and grateful uh, of what Chelsea have done in the last 20 years. Uh, and until recently, the the source of that money has not been an issue. Now it has become one. And tying Abramovich directly to Putin, as the UK government has done in this uh, explanation for the sanctions list, um, is a pretty brutal act, to be honest, and one that will certainly make, I think, a lot of supporters, even Chelsea supporters, start to question the concept of blind loyalty. You really do hope so. It, just to, to tease out what might happen to the club, if they if it's not allowed to be sold, then the question of ownership becomes very important very quickly. And then I do wonder about the possibility here for some kind of fan ownership or some kind of... Like, all of a sudden, the club doesn't have the value that it had to Abramovich. It still has massive value to whoever wants to buy it. So I don't know, like... If, if nobody is on the other end of that transaction, do they need to realise all the value? They don't need to get two billion or three billion because where's that money going to go? Well, the thing, I guess, is if they can't sell, then the club has to become self-sufficient totally because there's no further shareholder, owner funding allowable, which means, I suspect, that any transfer plans go out the window. What they've got to do is to raise money by selling players who they wanted to keep because otherwise they're not going to be able to to freshen things up. 
And of course, knowing that they're in effectively any sale is a distressed sale, the price of those assets will drop because it's a buyer's market. Then the value of the club drops because the quality of, you know, the, the sort of the knock on effect is, is, is absolutely huge. Whatever happened, it was going to be very different post Vermovich. I couldn't see anybody else coming in and being uh, as keen to say in the final analysis, I'll go on then when it came to the manager asking for money. Now it changes it even even further. What's interesting also in that list, of course, is, is linked directly with Alicia Usmanov as well, who's also, um, you know, rather involved with football at Everton, despite all the denials and, and, and ad, uh, statements to the contrary. Yeah. Two clubs in, in, in lockstep, in a fatal embrace, it seems, uh, in a dance of death. It's going to be very interesting to see how this plays out. Thanks very much for taking the call again this morning, Martin. Cheers to you. Thanks for that. Cheers. It's Martin Lipton giving us some reaction there to the breaking news this morning. We were also joined by Jonathan Wilson. Jonathan, the the scale of the response from the British government this morning, um, I guess it's, it's not surprising. Uh, it's just that it is so all-encompassing that um, we don't really know what's going to happen next. Obviously, the main story here is Roman Abramovich has been publicly linked by the British government as a Putin ally for decades. That's what the official line is from Whitehall this morning. And uh, it it opens up all sorts of conversations about um, why he bought Chelsea in the first place and all that kind of stuff. We can definitely talk about that. I, I do also just want to talk about the specifics of what it means from a football perspective. What's your instinct about what's next for Chelsea? I think it's incredibly hard to, to tell. It's incredibly hard to know exactly what this means. So, I mean, from, from what I've been able to pick up in the last sort of 20 minutes or so, they're not even allowed to sell more tickets. So, OK, if you've got a season ticket already, if you've already got a ticket for a match, I think you're OK. I mean, this is obviously kind of at the, the, the sort of lower end of it, the small scale of, of what the implications are. But what that means is, pretty quickly, they're not going to have money coming in. And if you haven't got money coming in, you can't pay wages. If you can't pay wages, those players can walk away from their contract. Um, yeah, you've got... Um, they, they play Middlesbrough in the FA Cup uh, a week come Saturday. If they win that and they're in the semi-final, the clubs handle the ticket sales for the semi-finals. So does that mean we're going to see a half-empty Wembley for, a, for an FA Cup semi-final? I mean, look, again, in the wider scheme of things, it doesn't really matter, but... That's the, the, the scale of, of what this, this could be. There's very simple things like this club will not be able to sell tickets. Now, uh, I'm not even sure how a sale of a club would go ahead. I mean, Abramus clearly will still want to get rid of it. But if he, if he sanctions it, if his, if his assets are frozen, presumably that means he cannot sell it. So you then have this asset that uh, can't bring in any fresh money and it's having to pay out wages what what happens to that? How does that club survive? And, and my suspicion is that pretty quickly, it's not going to be able to survive. We're not going to be able to survive in its present form. Now, the government's already um, said there's an exception. Uh, the sporting club are going to allow them to finish their fixtures this season. Uh, you know, to, to, you know, so there's not a knock-on effect for the Premier League. Whether they they, they sort of introduce other loopholes to, to allow them to, to bring in some revenue, I, I, I don't know. Well, they'll have to survive off the TV deals and, and sponsorship that have already been in existence. But you know, uh, some of those sponsorship deals are no doubt due to to wind down. Uh, Jonathan, I've got to say, we, we were having this conversation on on the show over the last week or so about the possibility of the club being nationalised and handed over to fans. And just to repeat the idea, essentially here now, nobody can buy this club because it can't be sold. The the government are seizing the assets. We don't know if they're actually seizing them long term and saying you won't get them back ever, but it kind of feels that way because the, the suggestion is that he has been close to Putin for decades and that's now in official documentation. So to then say, actually, that's grand, you can take the club back, no big deal. You can't really roll back from that, which means now the British government and the British people own this asset. The right thing to do would be to hand it over to the fans of Chelsea in the style of the Green Bay Packers or in the style even of the 50 plus one in Germany. Like there's loads of models out there for this club to be handed over now to the fans. Uh, yeah, there, there are. I mean, I, 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 yeah, this only broke 20 minutes ago. So to quite whether that's legally possible, exactly who does own it, I'm not sure. I mean, um, I guess technically Bramwood still owns it. He's just not allowed to profit from it. Um, so I, I, I don't know what point he is forced to relinquish that. Um, but 
Uh, I mean, that, that, that certainly is, you know, particularly given given the nature of his statements about you wanting to hand over uh, what was it, care and stewardship of the club to, to trustees. M- maybe he would be open to that. Although I don't really see what he has to gain from that now. You know, when he when he made that offer, I think it was fairly transparently um, to, to sort of uh, wriggle Chelsea away from any potential action from the government. Well, that, that action's now happened. So I, I don't know what he would gain by, by giving up Chelsea, apart from maybe some goodwill. But I also think he's probably got bigger things to worry about now. There's a, a travel ban associated with this and the details of his, his passport number has been published, his two passports. He's got a Portuguese passport and an Israeli passport. And um, as, as we've just said earlier, the the um, official list of, uh, of financial sanctions uh, does include details of his relationship with uh, Usmanov and and ultimately with Vladimir Putin and with companies associated with supplying the war effort in Russia. So it, it is... Obviously, the the government in in London have decided that they're going to reveal as much of the background information that they have about Roman Abramovich right now. Yeah, and, and I think that is telling. I mean, this is somebody, don't forget, who would take legal action against anybody. You know, over the last 19 years, he's taken legal action against anybody who suggested links with Putin. Um, there was even suggestions yesterday uh, that um, although MPs could say things on the parliamentary privilege, that potentially libel actions could be launched against journalists who reported what was said in Parliament. Now, you're legally, that's uh, uh, a pretty grey area, but um, the, the, the danger of that is that just the act of having to fight libel actions can be so cripplingly expensive that, that that would restrict what journalists could say. Now, you have this statement coming out this morning, which it's a government document. Clearly, we are allowed to quote that. Um, and also, you now think, well, the lawyers who were acting for him, presumably they're not going to get paid either. So there's absolutely no incentive for them to be pursuing these actions. So I do wonder what else will come out as a result of that. It- and I think this, this openness from the government um, is, is almost sort of preempting that. It's sort of saying, look, here's all the stuff we know. It's open season. Like, that's what I was just about to ask, actually. Is it a complete game changer? I, I presume there's been a whole heap of stories that have been suppressed within the football media in England over the last few years with regards to, to Abramovich. Yeah, I mean, we, it's, 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 it's kind of worked, the, the, um, the, the extreme uh, litigiousness. Uh, I mean, just to give you a very banal example, um, before the uh, Champions League semi-finals last season, uh, which were Real Madrid, City, um, Manchester City, that is obviously PSG and Chelsea, um, you know, clearly all of them have, uh, should we say, interesting ownership. I, and I, 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 I was sort of really writing about PSG and Manchester City, and about Qatar and Abu Dhabi. And I made passing reference to Bramwich, and the Guardian's lawyers took out that paragraph because they said that even a passing reference you know, was, was enough to, to land us in trouble. So if, when you say the lawyers are that nervous, it just discourages you from ever saying anything. Mm. Well, I, clearly those restrictions now uh, are being lifted, and, and, and who knows what might come out. In fairness, we've been critical of the speed with which various uh, governments around the world have been uh, have been acting kind of inspired by how fast Germany seized the super yacht last week but there are 204 separate named uh, Russian uh, Russian connected citizens in uh, this document published this morning and there's a bunch of other entities as in corporations, companies, banks etc who had now had uh, similar response um, asset frozen assets frozen. This is a massive moment in terms of the sanctions that the UK have taken against Russia in the aftermath of the war. And Abramovich is obviously the story that we're talking about, but as as the detail emerges of all of the other people who have been sanctioned here, like the powerlessness of the, the West to intervene in what Russia have been doing with Ukraine, or certainly the, the um, fact that they haven't been willing to, stuff like this actually really matters. Like Roman Abramovich did have a connection with Chelsea for a strategic reason to try and protect him if something like this happened and the fact that he has been una- unable to do so hopefully is a very important moment in football and potentially you would hope in in uh, influencing what's coming next um, Well I, I think it's certainly significant in terms of the UK government and London generally's relationship with, with Russia uh, I mean there was a, a study um, earlier this week which suggested that Russian assets in the UK amounted to 11% of UK GDP, which is obviously a, a phenomenal amount. 
Um, you also think if the government were able to seize that, I mean, presumably a lot of it would go to, to, to the rebuilding efforts in Ukraine. But it also would, um, it might clear a lot of the concerns about sort of post-COVID uh, debts and things. So I can see there's a sort of immediate financial attraction, or albeit cutting off a uh, you know, previous uh, source of, of, of wealth generally for the city and for, for law firms in London. And obviously the Conservative Party has been, been, um, you know, been, you know, been you know, several millions of pounds of donations to the Conservative Party from, from Russians. So, so in that, that sense, yes, it, it, it is a massive uh, step change for, for the UK in terms of the relationship with Russia and Russian wealth. Whether it's a massive change for football, I'm not sure, because you still have Saudi Arabia or you know, the public investment fund of Saudi Arabia, which you know, the Premier League has decided is completely separate from the state of Saudi Arabia, owning Newcastle. You still have Abu Dhabi owning Manchester City. Whether fans of those clubs now are going to be uh, a bit more anxious about their ownership... Um, if only for the practical reason that, that they're going to see what happens to Chelsea when, when suddenly there's no income. Um, I, I don't know, but um, certainly I think going forward, fans of, of other potential um, uh, clubs that might be purchased for, for, from, from overseas states or, or, or oligarchs, they, they, they may not be quite so welcoming as, as, as we've seen over the last 20 years. All right, look, we're going to leave it there. Thanks a million for taking the call at such short notice this morning, Jonathan. It's obviously a lot to, of information to parse. I do think the fan ownership is the way forward here, and it's on the table if enough people kind of start talking about it. Yeah, possibly. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, I, yeah, as I say, I, I just don't know the, the, the legalities around that. But, but, I mean, clearly, yeah, long term, if you were setting up a new football utopia, you would ensure there is some level of fan control to try and prevent this kind of thing happening. Jonathan Wilson, great to have you with us. Thanks a million. Cheers, thanks. You can read his stuff in The Guardian. You can hear him on Football Weekly as well. Right, uh, big breaking news, obviously, and we're trying to sift through the details and information. And as I said, the um, the document that the um, the Treasury in uh, the UK have this morning published is like 42 pages of, I don't know, is that is that seven or eight font? It's certainly tiny little font, but uh, they were pulling no punches when it came to Roman Abramovich, he is the second name on the list. I'm fairly sure that it's um, it is done by alphabetical order, but he's the big fish in terms of um, what they're writing about and his links and the uh, suggestions that the British government, the belief that the British government have about Abramovich's links with Putin. He's a prominent Russian businessman, pro Kremlin oligarch. Abramovich is associated with a person who is or has been involved in destabilizing Ukraine, undermining and threatening the territorial integrity, sovereignty, and independence of Ukraine, namely. Vladimir Putin. It's written down in black and white. Now, it's quite possible the British government knew this a long time ago. Could have shared this information with the Premier League, maybe. Mm. Just one other thing there, just see Tarek Panja saying that the, the club can receive broadcast fees and merit payments, but they, those then must be frozen. So television money isn't going to be able to fund a summer transfer window, for example. Yeah, in the uh, uh, like they've seized the club. Yeah, Take it, give it to the, give it to the fans. Like, just like that. Just go, while we're at it, sorry, here's what we've decided to do. And it's it's fast as opposed to getting involved in this wrangling about the assets. I mean, if if, if he doesn't have access to his finances anymore, it's going to be difficult for him to find people to represent his side of the story. <clears throat> and it, the, the point, I think, about the legality is, is it legal just to take someone's assets? Under extreme circumstances, it is. And when you get those assets, what are you going to do with them? This is like when the Criminal Assets Bureau gets stuff, they wait a while and then they put it up for sale and then the so in, in this instance we've decided that football is important enough to go we're giving this to the community and it's going to be a share ownership run for the benefit and by the supporters and mm. there are a load of models out there it's very easy to do and it's pretty easy to sort out so um, significant definitely to the at least yeah Right, OTBAM is brought to you live each morning by Gillette Labs for an effortless finish to your day. If you've just been introduced to us by this podcast or on YouTube, make sure you subscribe. Hit the subscribe button, uh, youtube.com forward slash off the ball. We're here every day uh, or you can subscribe to the podcast as well. We'll see you tomorrow.